we can about uh, do an estimate of what they are going to score in CineBench R23. And those numbers are this. Yesterday, Apple held another one of their Apple events and they showed many interesting things, including new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. But by far the most exciting for most people, myself included, was that they showed off two brand new chips. They are M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. Now, if you recall last year, Apple presented M1, which has an 8 core CPU with 4 high performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, and up to 8 GPU cores. And generally, it was extremely fast, much faster than comparable chips from Intel they had in the past. So many people were very impressed and excited for next bigger generations of that chip, and they have presented those now. And they are truly enormous chips. It's been estimated that the largest M1 Max is over 400 square millimeters in size, which is just enormous for a laptop chip. And the reason why they are so big is because Apple has packed a truly enormous amount of computing power into them. For the M1 Pro, you now get an up to 10 core CPU, so 8 high performance and 2 efficiency. That's also the same for M1 Max, 8 high performance, 2 efficiency. For the M1 Pro, you now get a GPU up to 16 cores. And with M1 Max, you get a GPU up to 32 cores now. Chips are also still made on the 5 nanometer process. The memory bandwidth is also pretty astounding. 200 gigabyte a second for M1 Pro, 400 gigabyte per second for M1 Max. That is also discrete desktop GPU classes of memory bandwidth. And to make that happen, they are using LPDDR5 memory, up to 64 GB in the case of M1 Max. Now in the past, Apple's been well known to tout impressive performance figures that don't really mean a whole lot, other than being big numbers. However, this time round, the charts have made a dramatic improvement. So in this video, I want to have a closer look at what kind of performance figures they are claiming exactly. Let's start with the first one, multi-core CPU performance versus power. And already see we've seen a dramatic improvement. We've got an X-axis with numbers, we've got a Y-axis with numbers. This is great stuff, Apple. In terms of chips, we can see we have M1, we have M1 Pro and M1 Max. These are the 10-core CPU chips. Then we also have a 4-core PC laptop chip and an 8-core PC laptop chip. And here the M1 Pro and M1 Max is claiming at 30 watts, which is supposedly their max power consumption, a 1.7x compared to the PC laptop chip at that uh, power consumption level. And also we see a dramatic improvement comparing M1 to M1 Pro and M1 Max. But more importantly, in the fine script, we can see what these 4-core and 8-core parts exactly are. In the case of the 4-core part, it is a Tiger Lake Core i7 1185G7. So a 4-core 8-thread part, up to 4.8 GHz, 10 nanometer super thin process. And for the 8-core part, it is a MSI GP66 Leopard, which has also a Tiger Lake, but this time an 8-core part, the 11800H. 8 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.6 GHz, 10 nanometer super thin also. And knowing that, and with a bit of PowerPoint creativity, we can make the following. So we see a lot here. We see that the Tiger Lake 1185 G7 is up to 40 watts, which is pretty typical for it. 11863 watts, also pretty typical. But also here we can see the relative performance difference with the M1 at 100, M1 Pro at 163. And what we really want to do is be able to compare what the M1 Pro and M1 Max CPUs might score. And for that we're going to use Cinebench R23. It, runs, it has a Mac OS a native ARM app and Windows and there is a whole database of pre-existing uh, chips that have been tested. And we really need to know two things. If we know what the M1, the i7 and the other i7 have scored, and if we also know how much faster the M1 Pro and M1 Max CPUs are per Apple's figures, we can about uh, do an estimate of what they are going to score in Cinebench R23. 
and those numbers are this. Compared to the data point where you calculate the figures from, the, uh, the M1 Pro and M1 Max CPUs will be anywhere from 11,900 points to 13,500 points as per these figures in Cinebench R23. So that means we're going to have laptops with similar CPU power somewhere between a Ryzen 5 5600X, so a 6 core 12 thread part, 65 watt desktop CPU and the Ryzen 7 5 and RX 8 core 105 watt chip. So I do think that these are going to be some incredible multi thread CPU numbers from these new M1 Pro and M1 Max CPUs. Next up is GPU, and here the numbers are also interesting. Here they are comparing M1 Pro, so that's the 16 core GPU model, versus discrete PC laptop graphics. And they say that at the same performance, the M1 Pro is using 70% less power. Now, this discrete PC laptop graphics turned out to be Lenovo Legion 5 with an RTX 3050 Ti. Now, the 3050 Ti is an entry level in Nvidia's Ampere mobile lineup with 2560 CUDA cores and compared to desktop is fairly slow really. But nevertheless, still a reasonable gaming GPU. An, an interesting side note here is that also they're quoting 105 watts for the RTX 3050 Ti, which is an awful lot in most cases. You're not going to be seeing over 80 uh, watt power consumption as per notebook checks numbers. In any case, we can see the performance, relative performance here, and with a bit of drawing again, we can see 3050 Ti in the Re Legion 5, 192, and the M1 Pro at 200. Now, in order to compare performance, we are going to be using TimeSpy, uh, specifically uh, the graphics test, as that is GPU bound, it doesn't involve the, G the, the CPU. And using those scores and the other desktop scores from uh, other RTX desktop cards, we get the following chart. So here we see that the RTX 3050 Ti is around 4, 5,420 points. Uh, supposedly the 16 core M1 Pro is a bit more potent. So it should be uh, in TimeSpy graphics realm around the level of the Pascal GTX 1070 with the desktop RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti much further ahead. So should be quite a potent GPU for a laptop. Now they are comparing it to compact Pro PC laptop graphics. And here they have the M1 Max to compare it to. So that's the biggest one with 32 core GPU. And they say that at roughly the same uh, performance level, it, it uses 40% less power. Now it turned out to be that that compact Pro model was the Razer Blade 15 with if we zoom in a bit further, an RTX 3080. Now that's a much more potent chip compared to the 3050 Ti we saw last. As we can see here at 6144 CUDA cores, it is actually equal to the desktop RTX 3070 Ti. But there's a lot of variance in terms of RTX 3080 models in their energy consumption. Some models are more constricted than others, starting at 80 to 150 watt plus. Now here we're seeing the, R the RTX 3080 at around 102 watts power consumption compared to 57 watt for the 32 core GPU in the M1 Max. And with a bit of line drawing again, we can see around a 13% extra performance compared to 102 watt RTX 3080 in the Razer Blade 15. Now moving forward again, we can search what the Razer Blade scored in Time Spy graphics. And we can add that to our big chart. So in this case, the Apple, the Apple M1 Max 32 core GPU would be around the level of a desktop RTX 3060 Ti as per these numbers and calculations. Now that is insane if that were actually true, that we would have a MacBook Pro, a small slim laptop with RTX 3060 Ti desktop graphics performance, that would really be something. And last but not least, high-end PC laptop graphics versus 32-core M1 Max. 
So here the high-end PC laptop graphics is faster than the M1 Max, but they say that it uses 100 watts less power. Now this high-end PC laptop graphics turned out to be an MSI GE76 Raider 11 UH, also equipped with RTX 3080 graphics. But in this case, it is uh, way less constricted, can use a lot more power. Here we are seeing 163, so it's really at the top end of what a mobile RTX 3080 can use. And here we see the M1 Max at 57 watt and the uh, Razer Blade at 102 watt. It's RTX 3080. So for that, we can also look up the GE76's Time Spy score, compare that to the M1 Max, and we get the following numbers. And here they are even slightly better compared to the data point we had of the Razer Blade. So as per these numbers, we are looking at a time spy score which isn't indicative of gaming and I'm not expecting perfect scaling. We see here from the 16 core M1 Pro to basically doubling of the uh, Apple M1 Max. That would be quite something and I'm not expecting that to happen. But I am expecting it to be somewhere in within the realm of at least 3060 to 3060 Ti based on these numbers and calculations and the relative performance metrics Apple is giving. Now those are quite some numbers and I would again like to stress that these aren't any concrete figures but I would be surprised if they are very far off. I do think Apple is very confident in these chips and with the performance numbers they are putting out here with these specific details which they haven't really done in that way before. In any case, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the reviews come out uh, next week as that is when around when these machines are going to ship. Unfortunately, I won't be one of the people who will be getting their hands on M1 Pro and M1 Max as they are a bit out of my price range. But in any case, as a CPU and GPU enthusiast, there is a lot to like here. And if you have enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to be kept up to date on future videos, why not consider subscribing to the Fully Buffered channel? In any case, that is all for now and bye bye.